Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to create a multiplayer game framework using Node.js and Socket.io. This framework can be easily extended to create your own versions of Yahtzee, Tic-Tac-Toe or four in a row games and play with your friends online. My name is Matias Borjo and in the description of this video you'll find a URL to clone my repository in GitHub that has the full source code and not the light version I will use for this demo. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clone my repository now. This framework consists of a server.js file that will serve our web application and handle connections and the logic for both the clients and the game controller. Index.html is a very basic page where players will enter their name, join the game and pass their turn to other players. Game.js contains the event handlers for those actions. Game controller has a logic and will handle the interactions between players. In players.js defines a player and its status, such as the name, score, and if it's active or not. We'll start by defining what a player is. We'll store here data to identify players and also their status. That will change as the game moves on, of course. So we need to handle new players, give them an ID, a name, We'll need to set some defaults like its score and the flag that will help us know if it's active, meaning it is his turn or not. Then we'll jump to the game controller logic. First, we'll need to include our player definition and enable the game to handle multiple players. Each player will join the game by connecting to the server and on each new connection, our server, using Socket.io, will ask the game controller to handle this connection or socket. So what we are going to do now is basically catch these new connections. When a new connection or player comes in, we'll push this new player into our players list. This new player will be identified by its name and the socket ID. And we'll also need to announce that a new player has joined the game to the other players. Of course, we don't want to accept new players once the game has started. So let's create a function to tell whether the game has started or not. A simple way to do this is finding an active player in the list of players. If a player is active, then the game has already started. Another event we'll need to handle is when a player passes its turn to another player, which we'll also use to start our game let's say none of the players are active, then the turn will be passed to the first player in the list. In order to do that, let's get the position or index of our active player in the list of players. This will be our current active player. Remember, find index will return minus one if none of the players will be active. When passing the turn, the next player to become active is logically current plus one. But as we are working with lists, we can easily make it a circular queue by using the modular arithmetic. This is calculating index modulo length, where index is our position and length is the length of the list. Again, if none of the players were active, current would be minus one and next would be zero which is our first player in the list. We can now remove the active flag from the current play active player and give it to the next one in the list. Same as before, we need to announce that the turn was passed and that there's a new active player to the rest of the players. Let's add now the final piece to our server.js so it can handle those new connections. We'll include socket.io 
and we'll bind it to our web server. We'll also define our game controller. And finally, we'll assign our game controller the responsibility of handling sockets or players when a new connection is done. Now let's jump to the index.html file and add the socket.io library and include the client's game logic. The client's game logic will need to handle player's actions like joining a game or passing a turn. So let's bin the actionable DOM elements to JavaScript variables to later assign them events handlers easily. For the player name, now for the button to join a game, now for the button to start the game, and finally for the button to pass a turn. Now we can start binding event handlers to the buttons. When a player presses the join button, we want to announce the game controller that a new player has arrived and know that the name is going to be sent in this very same moment. Remember that start and pass buttons would do basically the same, passing the turn to the player that comes after the current active player in the player's list. If no player is active, it will be passed to the first one. Finally, we need to handle game updates, such as a new player has joined or a player has passed its turn. Let's get the ID of the player. show the list of joint players in a console and find out whether the game has started or not. If the game has not yet started, we'll show the start button only to the first player in the list on the other hand, if the game has started, let's find out who is the active player. So we can show that in the console. And uh, of course, we will need to remove the start button so the game cannot be started twice. Finally, if this is the active current player, let's show him the pass turn button so he can pass the turn to another player. Now it is time to play our game. We'll have to run npm install to download and restore the node modules. It won't take too much uh, since our code is pretty small. And just then we can run node server.js. And we can navigate to localhost 8080. I'm going to duplicate the tab to make two players. And let's give it a try. I'll join as player one in the first tab and as player 2 in the second tab. Note the start button in the first player and that both players have been announced. When player 1 presses start and then passes the turn, player 2 becomes active and then he can pass the turn to player 1 and so on. With that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you've learned something new today. Please post your comments and give me thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching.